All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got head coach of your Kent State Golden Flashes, Sean Lewis, here to take some questions and an opening statement here about the game we just saw against the University of Georgia. So, Coach, take away your opening thoughts about today's game. Yeah, I mean, really pleased with the way that our kids fought, really pleased with the way that they battled, the way that they went about their business. I'm obviously not happy with the results, right? But you, you hear coaches sit up there and talk about, hey, I'm happy, not happy with the results, but, you know, that I'm not happy with the process. I, I'm not happy with the results, but I was very pleased with the process and the way that our kids went about their business. It's a really talented ball club. We have a really talented club that have gone through tremendous adversity, tremendous conflict through the month of September, and they embrace it and they get better because of it and our character grows stronger because of it. We get tighter as a ball club together because of it and it's something that they lean into and it's real work that makes us better. It's real work that gives us real confidence. I'm really pleased with the effort from our kids excited to get back home and to get back to work with these guys because I know we have a great future ahead of us because we're willing to work and we're willing to embrace the process each and every single day to improve and go compete. So couldn't be prouder, more humble to lead these guys and the effort that they put forth today. Let's open it up here on the floor for, for questions for Coach. Uh, Coach, Patrick Garvin, PGAsports.com. You had some very praiseworthy uh, comments earlier about Georgia this week uh, about greatest team assembled and whatnot. You just came in here and played them a good game. What, what did, what was the biggest challenge that Georgia did present? Whether it was a particular position or maybe the crowd or what? I mean, across the board, right? It's an elite program that's recruited at an elite level. So they've gotten talent in, not only amongst the players, obviously they're the ones in between the white lines that are making the plays and each and every single level in all three phases, they challenge you, right? They're able to impact the game and special teams get an early block kick for a safety that, that changes the complexion of things. You know, they got a tight end that they can hand the ball to that goes 75 yards. That's a little bit different, right? Than most teams have, you know, so they stress you out in a lot of different ways. They have an incredible staff. Of, of talent that's able to work together. I've seen a tremendous amount of ball, right? That they're able to work well together seamlessly. There's total alignment from the top down with what they do. So it's the it's the breadth and the depth of their talent, the players, the staff, the support, everything that they have. But again, the with what our kids have showed, what our staff has shown, the character that we have to go in toe to toe and, and to to embrace that challenge. I'm very very proud of them. But uh, obviously, we came up short. Need to get better as we go forward. Um, but you know, tremendous contact, tremendous arena to step into to test who we are to really know what we can trust within our family. Hey Joe, Frank Brown, what's up you heard part of it you say Colin three of you know the athlete all around. What did you see from him when you practice this week and why do you think this is on? He goes about his business the right way. You know, he's been in our program for, for over three years and he wasn't a highly recruited kid. He's a guy that our staff went out and identified and he's been developing and grooming and growing um, since he's been within our program. So every single day he goes about his business the right way. And you saw that again today, right? Like we talk all the time that every day is a work day in our building and today's a work day as well. Obviously a really, really important one, but he went out and he handled his work the same way that he does each and every single day. And he doesn't let whatever environment or opponent that he's going against influence him. He's him, he's confident. And again, because of that work that he's put in, he knows that he's going to have success in the long haul. Any other questions here from the group? Well, let's turn to our guys back at home. We'll start with Alan Moff from the Record Courier. Alan, any questions for Coach? Coach, this is the, the third one of these in four weeks. Um, you know, you're sitting there thinking, okay, you guys might wore down, uh, which would have been a very logical thing. I don't think you did. I mean, just talk about, you know, I think you played some of your best football in, in the second half of this and just what that means to you and what you can take from that. Again, I mean, it's, it's real confidence. It's true confidence that we can take going forward, Alan, right? It's a testament to the strength and conditioning staff, the work that our put, kids have put in, this group of kids and this addition of our family has put in this year since January to be able to be in this environment, to be in a four quarter fight. And yeah, we're going to have some bumps and bruises. That's what happens with this beautiful game. That's what makes it different. But our, our kids kept coming back, right? We, we, we believe in our core belief of, you know, toughness. And we define that as going harder, longer than anyone else is willing to. And our kids showed that today. Their actions aligned with those words. And when we have that with the things that we believe, again, over the long haul, we're going to be just fine. Coach, I know you come in here to, to win, obviously, um, but just, you know, knowing who you're up against, um, obviously how difficult that's going to be. Was there a time maybe in the fourth quarter when you had a chance to make it a one score game where you guys are sitting over there and you can just kind of look around and think, wow, we actually really can win this game? And I believe that we can win every single game and every single arena that we step into. And it happened to be the Georgia Bulldogs today. But, you know, my belief is that, we need to do what winning requires each and every single day. And when we do that, the way that we did today, we're gonna to have a chance to win. So again, not happy with the result, but happy with the way that we went about the process of winning today. We came up a little bit short, but I believe 
in every single arena that we've ever stepped in since I've been here. And as we continue to go forward with these kids, I'm going to bet on me and mine versus everyone, and we're going to be just fine. Um, just talk a little bit about, you know, all three phases and making some real splash plays, um, you know, starting with defense. I know Marvin wasn't able to play last week. Um, he has a rip and a fumble recovery, um, had a couple other huge plays, um, you know, just start on the defensive end with those, those types of plays and Marvin in particular. Yeah, I mean, just being opportunistic and playing with relentless effort, right? I mean, we got guys that are running to the ball. We got guys like Marvin, guys like Caleb Johns, guys like Nico Bolden. Every single time you, you turn on the tape, their resume speaks for itself. They're flying to the football. They're being aggressive as they settle in. They learn more and more about the scheme and having situational awareness. They know where they can just go and they can just hunt and they can be aggressive. So to be able to generate turnovers, you know, for special teams to be able to go and generate a turnover early and be able to tie everything together. Again, the, the teams are the glue that tie the offense and the defense together. So, you know, to, for Josh to, to get a great boot on that thing and for us to recover that muff kick and then to get some points on the board early gives the whole sideline life. And then later in the game there when, you know, we're kind of wobbly a little bit and we need a play to inject some life and to, you know, stay in it again for our punt team to go out and execute that, that, that fake, you know, it's a big time plays and it's big time players making big time plays. And that's where, you know, we're scheming things up for the guys that we know that we can trust the guys that are our best players and they're showing up and that's what they need to do. Right. And so being opportunistic and guys being trained so that the moment presents itself, they can seize it. That's what it's all about. Our guys are doing that. We need to continue to do that as a staff to put our guys in the best position to be successful week in and week out. And if our kids play hard and they do right, and no matter what happens, they just keep doing the next thing the right way. Good things are going to happen. Um, you know, you're struggling offensively in the, in the early going there, and then you get the turnover that Marvin forced. And then um, talk about the play to Walker. Um, and first of all, I couldn't really see who was the boy. Somebody took two guys out in front of him. Who was Chris that? Leach. And then just talk about that play. Yeah, so Chris Leach was on the block. And, and again, it's a tremendous testament to the character of our team. And that's a, a real world rep with that kid right there, right? To where early on we have the third down conversion where we're throwing him a little tight end screen. That I think has a chance to be a decent play and his feet kind of got tangled up and he went to the ground. And you know what? I, I think a real common response for a lot of young men would have been to hang their head and let that play carry over for two, three, four more plays or for the rest of the game. It could have ruined their day. And I thought Chris did an unbelievable job of clearing it. He refocused when, when we needed him to and had a tremendous block. So I appreciate you asking about that and seeing that because that's the type of effort, you know, that's kind of invisible that if you don't notice it, yeah, hey, you see Tez catch it and step out. And obviously that's really impressive for him to be able to run and separate with the amount of speed that was on that field today. And for him to be one of the fastest guys out there, you know, that's a big time play and a big time testament to his work since he's been here as well. But again, that's just the unselfish nature, you know, of the ball club that, you know, hey, we need guys that are going to have their hands on the ball and they're going to go score with it. But, man, it takes 10 other guys to do their piece as well so that we can make those plays happen and to have great success. Um, last one, just, you know, obviously Bowers is a, is a guy you're worried about coming in. Um, you know, the first you know, second play of the game he goes. Um, you know, talk about that play, first of all, how they caught you, and then, you know, just being able to overcome that. You're sitting there 19 seconds in on the road against these guys down seven. Hey, you don't flinch, right? I mean, things are going to happen. You're going to step in the arena and you're going to get popped in the mouth. All right. So eat the jab, clear it, and, and let's go. Let's play. We know that they had good players, right? A lot was made about my comments earlier in the week. Like, they got good players and good players make plays. So a good player made a play. You know, again, it was, a, it was really well executed by them. Um, you know, and, and so our kids did a great job. All right. Hey, tip of the cap. Like, that's going to happen. It's a long ball game. You know, if you're going to let the, that second play of the game influence the whole rest of the game, then you're in the wrong arena. There, there, there's going to be some choppy waters, and that's going to make a sil skilled sailor. So let's settle in. Let, let's ride these waves out, and, and let's get into the ball game. I thought we did that in all three phases. Again, you know, wish we would have made a few more plays right at the end of the day, but I thought the way that our kids responded, again, the same way that Chris did, to refocus and to get back to, to the task at hand. Our defense did the exact same thing. They refocused. They got back to the task at hand. And the longer that we as a staff and with this group and with this crew can spend more time on task together, we're going to really understand who we are, what we stand for, how we can do things to an elite level. And I look forward to doing that work as we continue to go forward. All right. Thanks, Alan. Let's go over to Steve Hill from the hospital. Steve, any questions for Coach? Yes, uh, Coach. Uh, you had a similar one and three start last year with a really difficult non conference schedule. So, what did you learn from this year's schedule that makes you uh, have belief in this team heading into MAC play? The work that we get to do together each and every single day, Steve, 
the way in which our kids carry themselves and, and a lot's made about the schedule and all these outside factors and everything. But at the end of the day, it's not about who we're playing. They're really the only opponent that we have is winning, right? And doing things that winning requires. So again, it was Georgia this week. It was Washington week one. It was LIU last week, and it's going to be Ohio next week. But wins are hard to come by. So you got to respect that process and you got to battle winning each and every single day and have the character, have the discipline, have the resolve each and every single week. And what I've learned from the team this year about that is our kids are willing to lean into that, right? So it's been real easy and again, really common. And a lot was made about this week about, hey, this culmination of everything that's going on. Like that, that's, that's society's opinion about what it is. Uh, I'm gonna take the feedback from my ball club and the reality that I see each and every single day and the way that we show up to work tells me that we're gonna be fine. We're a high character ball club that can improve in a lot of areas, but they're willing to work and we're gonna improve. So we're gonna roll our sleeves up, work works. And I'm excited to get to, to that work with this team. And the ball movement today was uh, pretty effective compared to some of the previous non-conference games. How did last week's 60-point showing against LIU really invoke some confidence in this offense and sustaining those drives? Yeah, I think everyone needs a payday every now and again, right? Working's great, but you got to get paid sometimes too. So our kids realize, you know, and they got some injections of life and some confidence. And then again, to have some early success after working through some adversity, you know, I think it was three or four possessions that we had straight three and outs. Right. But then ultimately we did some really base things at a high level against a good opponent and our kids realize, all right, hey, that's what we need to do. All right. So that that gives them some some life, gives them some confidence. And now we need to use that to propel us as we go forward to do the work again that winning requires because there's no easy there's no easy games. Right. We, we know that about the Mac and, and there's nothing going to be simple about this next week either. Thanks, Steve. Let's go to Jack Ray with uh, TV2. Jack, any questions for coach? Yeah, Coach, uh, just talk a little bit about Colin's performance today. Obviously, Georgia's relentless up front, but I thought Colin was able to make some good decisions, not turn the ball over, make some effective plays. Yeah, he did a really good job. Did, did a really good job, Jack. I think you're just asking about Colin's performance. If there's a second half of your question there that I missed, I'll be happy to answer it. But again, Colin did a great job. You know, we got to settle into the game. Obviously, you got to confirm what you see on tape to make sure that that is what you're getting actually on game day, right? And so he continues to do a great job of communicating what he's seeing, right? Being able to work together. And again, him and I spending more time on task together to really know what he likes, how he feels comfortable operating so that I can put him in the best position to be successful against a really quality opponent. And again, he consistently shows up day in and day out, you know, and that leads to efficient performances like today. We knew there wasn't going to be very many explosive plays because of, you know, the way that they play defensively and what they've done in the past. But, you know, again, to, to move the ball efficiently, to put up 22 points, I mean, shoot, and that's two more touchdowns than anyone else in college football scored on them. All right. So, Again, not happy with the results, but happy with the way that we went about the business. All right, and the task at hand as we went forward today. That's all I got. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Let's go to uh, Jacob Hansen with uh, the Kent Stater and Kent Wired. Jacob, any questions for Coach? Yeah, Coach, uh, you talked briefly about um, being the team to score the most points against Georgia this year. Talk a little bit more about that, what that means as a program coming in on the road to do that, what that no other team has been able to do this season. I mean, again, we have our standard within our building and we believe in what we do. It's why we do it. Our kids have tremendous confidence in it. So, again, anyone, anytime, anywhere, let's go mix it up. We're going to take our shot, you know. So I know a lot of people got a lot of opinions about a lot of other things, but I believe in my kids. I love my kids. They put in tremendous work and we'll go play anyone, anytime, anywhere. Let's get it on. And then um, talk about Devontae Walker a little bit more. Um, two back-to-back -back games of 50-yard receiving touchdowns, just – Talk about his speed, his athleticism, and what he's able to do alongside us, Cephas. He's really fast. So he picked his parents really good, and he's really, really fast. He works really, really hard. He's really developed his body and his skill set since he's been here with us. And obviously having, you know, Tez on one side and Cephas on the other side, you know, allows us to be balanced. The two of them are kind of like salt and pepper, you know, or ebony and ivory on, on the piano keys, man. They work well together. And we got to find a way to continue to utilize their skill set. And we got other great players as well, right? That are offensive weapons that we can deploy in a lot of different ways. And they do a tremendous job week in and week out, taking in the install, understanding why we need to move the pieces around because of their attention that they're getting. And, um, you know, they, they, they take the game plan and they do the work and then they go out and execute. So it's a tip of the cap to them and their efforts and, and the way that they go about their business. Uh, one last question. I'll talk about the uh, special teams, you know, getting a fumble on the pine fake punt, and then um, Glass putting up a lot of field goals. Just talk about how important they are keeping you in the game and that. Yeah, they're the glue. They're the, they're the, they're, those are the glue guys, 
y'all. I mean, there, there's so much that goes into that work. And they're the unsung heroes of the game because there's so many guys that are doing such amazing things. I mean, to tee the ball up and say, hey, we're going to kick it deep against the number one team in the country. And we believe in you guys to go down there and get a tackle for loss inside the 20 and to start them down at the 17 yard line. Like that's different. That, that, that's what makes this game so beautiful that we got guys that are completely bought in to do that. And I love that we got reporters that want to talk so much about special teams because it's critically important to us. And it gets, it allows me to brag on those guys. But I mean, we got guys that are showing up each and every single week in that phase of the game because it's so impactful. And we put a lot of time in it because it can be impactful. All right. And, and our guys do a great job with it. And because of that, again, we get turnovers. We get to extend drives. We get to get points on the board. I mean, that's huge. That, that's what winning requires. And so those guys have embraced it. You know, they love it. They love playing for Coach Barton. Coach Barton does an unbelievable job getting our kids prepared and, um, you know, just happy to do with the effort that they put forth each and every single week to be a positive impact on the game because of our special teams. Thanks, Coach. Absolutely. Last call here for questions. Go back to the crowd. Uh, I apologize. Uh, I've been asked already. I came in late, but uh, uh, you've, seen, you've seen plenty of Brock Bowers on, on tape. What was it like seeing him in person? And the combination of talents he brings to the game. Yeah, I mean, he's he's special, right? He has a very unique skill set that flashed on tape. And when you see it live, it confirms everything that you saw on, on, on tape as well. So he's the real deal, you know? And uh, yeah, I thought our kids battle hard against him. Obviously, he, he's a special player that made some big-time plays. But, you know, there, there's a reason why he has the uh, the attention that he has. And last I could ask just about you going to kind of a meat grinder here. Sorry, Dave, how, how do you think this team can come out? Where are you? at this end of the grinder. We're great. Meat grinder is your opinion. That's not my opinion. It's an opportunity for our kids each and every single week, right, to get better. And there's tests no matter what. No matter who you're playing, no matter where you're at, there's tests that you got to battle through. And so I love where my kids are at. I love where we're at in the locker room right now. I'm not happy with the results today. I'm not happy with our record. But I know that we're a high caliber team, a high character team because of the tests that we've been through. And I know that every single person that's in that locker room that's here on this trip that battled with us today, that I can trust them wholeheartedly. So I'm grateful and thankful for the tests that we get to have. Society and everyone else can call it what they want. All right, we're going to play who's on our schedule. Anyone, anytime, anywhere. All right, and, and I'm very, very happy to do that. And I'm very humbled and pleased. There's only 131 jobs of these in the country. And I'm very blessed and thankful. That I have a locker room full of guys that believe in our message, regardless of who the opponent is, that I get to lead them and they get to respond the way that they did. And I'm very thankful and grateful for the leadership that has my back so we can go do these things. And I'm excited to go forward with my kids. Last call for questions, either virtually or here in person. All right, Coach, thank you very much. We'll lay some up against Ohio. We'll be back home in front of the conference again. Go Flashes. Aaron, I'll see you. Jake, I'll see you. Appreciate you guys. Jacob, thank you.